Good afternoon. We're here for Five Minute Friday from the Kentucky Valley Education Cooperative in Eastern Kentucky with David Gibson of Paintsville Independent Schools and Scott Helton of uh, McGoffin County Schools. Thank you both gentlemen for joining me this afternoon to talk about an important report, Public Education in Rural Eastern Kentucky, A Region's Way Forward, that was released in February by 20 superintendents, part of this co-op, and is a call to action uh, to focus on education um, and its relationship to the economy in Eastern Kentucky. Uh, there's a great deal of urgency expressed in this report. Can you each talk about kind of the changing environment in Eastern Kentucky, in rural Kentucky, and what that means for education and the economy that prompted this report? Well, looking at uh, uh, at the report, and you talked about the uh, uh, the report in general, we had some statistics put in there that, that re related to what we're facing. And as a, as a region, uh, we were talking about being in the co-op. We have uh, 20 super, 22 superintendents. We just added a uh, second district, uh, another district uh, this summer. We'd be 23 of us. We were all looking and discussing things, and it, it actually come to a, a, a head, as if you want to call it, when when we started uh, hearing about some of the things that were going on in Frankfurt and how they were looking at pensions, and mm -hmm. it made us start to reflect on just where we're at as a as a school system in general, as within the state and and especially our region. Uh, some of the challenges we're facing, we, the the cuts and the financial cuts, we've been accepting those over years, and they've been gradual cuts, but we still had to, to deal with those issues. And then uh, I don't want you to come off as this paper is something that we're complaining about, but it's more that we're doing those things in spite of these things that are occurring, and we're having success. And we've got a lot of districts that are distinguished, and we've got a lot of districts that are successful, and superintendents that are doing outstanding jobs, and teachers that are doing great jobs. But we still have challenges to face, and our role as superintendent has changed. Uh, in my 31 years of uh, education, the role of the superintendent no longer can just focus on certain areas. We've got to be outside of the uh, uh, educational field. We have to be worried about this, 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 and where is it coming from? And, and it's making our role and our job a lot more uh, difficult, but that doesn't mean we're not successful. So what I want to get across to you in this paper is that we want them to understand what Eastern Kentucky is going through, what this region is going through within the economy and as far as education goes, because we feel that they're one and the same. Uh, uh, without a great economy or without a great school system, you can't have either. Right. And one of the things that comes through loud and clear in the report is just this, this call to community, um, that it's not about the public schools in isolation. It, it is about our community, our economy, um, all of those parts coming together in a region to respond to the unique needs of students locally um, and to focus on innovation to meet those needs. One, so, David, one, can you talk yeah, a little bit about that? Yeah, one of the things that? that I think really comes through in the report is is, yeah, we, we have obstacles. Uh, but if you look at the graduation data, you look at the number of distinguished school systems that are in our area, uh, number one, our graduation rate is one of the highest in the nation, uh, definitely the highest in the state uh, as a region. Uh, but we're also looking at how does the school system fit into the local economy, the local fiscal governments, and how they impact uh, job creation and economic development. Uh, our goal in this paper is to say, listen, we have all these obstacles in front of us, but look at our education systems. Look at what we're doing. We are producing the workforce for everyone else. Uh, you know, coal used to be our number one producer of our uh, number one export. Now it's become our people. Uh, our exports are now our talent, our people leaving and going to other areas. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying is, we have the ability to create the workforce for you through innovation, through different types of things that we're doing in school systems. What do you need as an industry to make that happen? You tell us what you need as a product, we will develop the skills and the labor force for you to do so we can do it right here in our, in our home. Uh, the, the lack of uh, communication among the amongst our region historically has been one of our obstacles but I think for the first time at least in my professional career of 21 years for the first time I see 22 districts 22 school systems 22 superintendents 22 boards of education influential people that are now saying listen let's work together let's figure this out all right so Pike County you may have this industry developing we've got the skilled trades up here in Paintsville or in McGoffin County to give you those workforces it's a 30-minute drive uh, 
Uh, I know traffic in Lexington sometimes just going a mile is That's 30 right. minutes. That's right. Here you got beautiful landscapes, mm -hmm. beautiful area, beautiful heritage, and we've got a mountain work ethic. There's a reason they hire mm -hmm. our people. They work their and tails so you off. talked about exporting talent, which I think is important in an area of our state, of our nation, where there's a, a lot of trouble importing industry and importing business. And, and that creates opportunity gaps for our students because of lack of exposure, life. lack of resources. In a rural area, how difficult is it to uh, bridge that opportunity gap, if you will, for our students? It's it's extraordinarily difficult when you don't have the the uh, the uh, industry here to maintain. And one of the examples is years past, you could guarantee almost one person that went to school uh, if they were uh, a married couple, one of those people may be a teacher. Well, we could provide those jobs, or we could provide a job in nursing or something like that. Uh, and maybe if the the uh, spouse was a coal miner or wanted a job in some other field, we could provide them a job that way. But now. We can't offer you a teaching job at a salary that can be competitive with Northern Kentucky or Fayette County or Jefferson County because our pay scale is a lot less than that of uh, uh, the, some some of the uh, other regions in the state, and we can't offer those jobs like uh, Georgetown can at Toyota for those people that may not want to have a, 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 a teaching experience or a, a nursing or something of that nature. We can't offer those jobs. But to go back into what Mr. Gibson was talking about. You talked about how do we communicate and things. One of the things that I've come out of the paper that's been promising to me is not only are we focusing now on communicating as school districts, but we've started to focus on because someone's going to have to be the voice for the community. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I've noticed in our community, we no longer are, 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 are fighting over that piece of pie. We're bringing the local government. The county judges, the magistrates, the sit, the mayor, and and the, the city council members together, mm -hmm. and we're having communication on that realm and on that level. That's been unique for me. Uh, I'll tell this: we we had a meeting a couple months ago, maybe a month or so ago, up here, and I actually had our state representative, the county judge, and the mayor climb in a car with me and ride up, and we had a good conversation. So we're all talking about the same things, and they are starting to see that without this. And without this, we mm -hmm. can't have this. It really is everybody's business. Exactly. That's what this is all about. It has business. to be everybody. Because there's not enough to go around right. if we don't all share. One of the things about the paper, too, that we were real careful of, and we had people from both sides of the aisle read this before we published it to see if we were pointing the finger. We don't want to be pointing the finger. We want to say, this is what we are. Mm -hmm. These are the things that we're doing as leaders in our communities. Uh, we have to be innovative. We have to take the initiatives. We can't sit back and, and wait for someone to come and help us. You know, we've got to take those steps ourselves. So the districts that in our region are doing things like, for instance, in my district, we're, we're in the process of developing an innovation center, a student academic center, uh, something that's never been done in our region, in, in particular in Paintsville Independent. Uh, we are also, last year we partnered with uh, uh, WordPress and uh, automatic uh, web design uh, to do remote work. Very unique mm -hmm. uh, thing that we did. We had 20 juniors and seniors that were partnered with uh, graphic designers from all over the world, from Brazil to Singapore to, to Canada to New York. And the whole goal of that was you can stay at home and make a living. Uh, we, we had a great partnership with John Maida to set that up. Uh, he came to the region uh, didn't understand our circumstances. He and I just met up and I told him what I thought about them taking our kids and going somewhere else. Let them right. work here. Develop yeah. industry here. That's right. And he was willing to partner with us. He, his comment was, I've got 600 employees and they all work from home. Mm -hmm. So we partnered up with them. And those are the types of innovative things that, are, that we're doing as leaders to say, listen, we can fix this ourselves, but you know, we're going to take some steps. We need a little bit of help sometimes. That's right. Yeah, That's and, right. And, and like he said, we're, we're, it's not a complaint uh, about where we're at, but we just wanted to make them aware. We want to be proactive than reactive. And, and the issues that we're facing, uh, some of the same issues are across the state. And we know that. And we understand that. But we also face some unique challenges as far as the environment that we live in and the culture that we've, uh, we're dealing with. I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. But when you're talking about funding and things of that nature, let's talk about transportation costs for us as far as busing students to kids, uh, to school from where we live. 
it's a little more expensive for us to p keep purchasing buses over and over again. So that's become somewhat, uh, somewhat of a problem. I have to pull that funding mm -hmm. from some pot here to cover here. So we're doing a juggling act, but we're doing a pretty good job of shifting and moving. But we just want to them to understand it's, it's kind of like on a roller coaster. You, you can go so high that you're going to come back down. Yeah. And we don't want to get to that decline. We want to be able to continue the growth that we're on. And, and as a district and as a region, uh, we hate to use an excuse as funding being the problem. And it's not. It's, it's not just the, the single problem that we're facing, but it's the communication. It's the relationship building. Mm -hmm. Well, we're now starting to do those things. And we can see some positive things come out of that. But... What we're trying to say is it's going to take everyone. It's it is not going to take going to everyone. Us. And it is, it, it, it's fair and it's been documented that as the adequacy, uh, adequate funding for our public schools has, has eroded, equity is eroding. And, 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 and we don't want to produce a generation that after generation. That's, right. uh, mm -hmm. You can go through this cycle so many times, and, and you, you all spoke about it. We're losing our top students and we're losing our top. Uh, 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 young uh, population as far as uh, career and educational uh, advancement, they're not coming back to this region. And how long can we go on losing well, those I think you brought people? up the key term there, equity. Mm -hmm. Equity does not always mean equal. Uh, you know, equity is fair. Equity is when someone needs a little bit extra help, we provide it to them. Mm -hmm. You know, we have students that uh, are on all spectrum from the very top to the very bottom. What is equal does not meet their needs. Right. Equity does. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the, the current tax system, you know, we, we went through that with CARA in the, in the 90s uh, to re, redistribute or refix the, the tax system. To I think, ensure that all of our school districts across the state had adequate and, and equitable resources exactly. for that's the right. student and I think, population. I think what we're seeing now is something that's made its time. I think it's time to revisit. I think the, the, I agree that the tax code and the tax system, especially for public education, is something that has to be addressed. Uh, we are taxing a poor population, an aged population, um, and we'll not get too much in the weeds on that, but it impacts us different than it does Scott County. Uh, Jefferson County, Fayette County. Yeah. Well, even with tr transportation, Scott, yes. which you brought up, I mean, the, the underfunding of transportation yeah. disproportionately affects rural areas where there are many, many more miles to traverse and, in school and, and buses. The, and, the, and the treacherous roads that they must travel exactly. and, and the repair that it's cost to, to, to send those buses on those roads. But we've got to try to get them to school. Yeah. The other thing that you, you brought up and that we're talking about, when you're talking about the uh, the uh, the lack of uh, uh, funding for transportation, it's not just transportation, it's across the board. There's, there's been cuts and cuts, minimal cuts, but they build up over time. And and what Dave is talking about, we're not here to complain. We're doing good things, but I just think that as a region, it's crucial that they see we're not any different, but we are different. Well, there's Does been an increased sense? reliance on local effort yes. um, over the past roughly decade. Uh, local effort, I mean local taxing effort. Uh, it, and that's a much different scenario in it, rural Kentucky than it so. is in urban Kentucky. And in eastern Kentucky, there's one thing we've not brought up at all is the loss of unmined mineral taxes. Mm. That was a big hit for some of us in eastern Kentucky a couple of years ago. Uh, they just took it off the books, and, and, and we were lost without that compensation from that being able to tax that unmined minerals, we no longer have that. And uh, we had to compensate. Now they came back and funded, refunded some, but now we don't have that going forward. That's not there, that's not an option. So that has to be made up somewhere. And it impacted like Pike County mm -hmm. and Knott County, mm -hmm. McGoffin County somewhat, but those counties that were high, high producing in coal, once those jobs are gone and they no longer tax that unmined mineral use, that funding's gone. Yeah. So we've been battling yet, a lot of things. We are sitting here today Performing in the a, largest virtual reality capture yeah. suite in the state. Absolutely. I'm sitting in a state of the art uh, gaming chair here, which our students in Eastern Kentucky use um, oh. at the screens behind us to yep. create virtual avatars, uh, to then take what they create. Um, and, and build 3D models of, of uh, different things. 
you see characters here, 3D uh, printer characters, uh, but in a conversation just a few minutes ago before we started taping, Jeff Hawkins shared uh, that students came up with ways to create devices for individuals suffering with diabetes and drop foot, mm -hmm. to create uh, braces for an yeah. individual's mm -hmm. foot. Um, they're thinking, they're problem solving, actively problem solving for their community. Yeah. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis the 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 resources that yeah. the district is providing, that KVEC is providing yeah. for the region, and that the districts you all, in collaboration with one another, are providing uh, for and I for think each that's other, a, I students. think that's important mm -hmm. that to stress that is it's a regional approach. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that there's any district in our region that could do this one off, right. but together we can. And I think that to me is the most important thing coming out of our our paper mm -hmm. is that. We as a region are going to stand together to fight for what we love and what we cherish. It's our students first. It's our communities. It's our families. And, and you know, I'm a son of a coal miner. I uh, worked 40 years in the mines. His dad drove coal trucks. His brother still does or did. So we love this area. We are products of the mountains. And we want, I know he proud wants it. Very, products. very proud. Mm -hmm. And I think our, the, the most important thing is, is united we can do this. Mm -hmm. And if, if if people don't want to help us, that's fine. They get to make that choice. But we're not going to sit back and wait for that. We're going to take the steps yeah. to do it ourselves. So we also looked at the uh, tiny houses on yeah. the way in, which KVEC is now kind of known for having an auction every spring yeah. with the tiny houses. You, you know, you talk about KVEC. KVEC's good about doing some things. They can go out and find funding and grants mm -hmm. that we may not be able to get as an individual district, but they can get it as a group. And, and we all benefit from that and share from that. But some of the other things to compensate for some of the things that we're, we're lacking. We've got to be innovative, and you talked about innovation. We've got to look at for funding any way we can. So we're always looking at grants and things that are out there to help our students to, and to provide those needs. And, you know, we're talking about Eastern Kentucky. We're, we're almost one-to-one -one in McAuliffe County. That's almost unheard of when you're talking about devices. And, and uh, we can connect, and we've got connectivity to any part. We can go virtual classrooms, Google Classrooms. We have all of that. We've got teachers doing those things. So it's it's amazing. And, and as far as our facilities go, ours are second to none in McGoffin County. You may not think that, but uh, they are. And, and uh, we're trying to provide our students with those environments and those opportunities that they need. Uh, so we've been juggling and struggling, but the paper's all about, most of it is the positive things that we're doing, mm -hmm. but we see the uh, pitfall that could be ahead if something doesn't change and we're speaking for that change that's, that that needs to take place and not only is it with funding but it's the communication the relationship the bonding the building and uh, dr hawkins come up with a uh, a term that I thought was a good term. You want to tell her what it is? Edge economy. Edge economy. I was just going to go to the rural yeah. edge economy zone. Exactly. And, and I think the thing that we sometimes, as superintendents, we get we deal with a lot of things. And he mentioned earlier that our jobs have changed drastically. We are our district's biggest advocates. Our job is to do everything we can to provide an adequate and exceptional education for our kids. And I think this paper illustrates that in, in a unique way. We, we are doing things with basically one hand tied behind our back. Imagine what we could accomplish mm -hmm. if that equity piece that we talked about earlier was, wasn't a problem. That across the board, he had the same resources, I had the same resources to provide for our kids. Mm -hmm. and, and, that's and to close those opportunity the gaps. The opportunity the gaps, opportunity exactly. Right. And, and, you know, when you have to watch your budget to worry if you – if you hire someone to fix an HVAC system, you got to figure out where am I going to find that funding from. So when that's in the back of my, your mind, it's hard to be innovative out here doing some things because, and, and it's hard for some of these other districts to understand. We do watch it that close. If I spend ten thousand dollars, I want to know where it goes. Mm -hmm. Now, in the past, Mr. Cecil sitting over there, we did have money in the past. We never thought about things like that. Davy was in McGoffin County. We were able to do things because we had funding. It's changed, and I went through the the gamut, and now I check and see how much my electric bills are running each month. Mm -hmm. I want to know. I probably watch our budget a lot closer in the district than I do my own. Yeah. And home. yet we know that preparing our students for Comes the 21st first. century yeah. economy is imperative That's for the state to move forward. Everything that I can put towards our students, I do. Any funding that I can find possible, we put it out there. 
And so, David, I, I kind of like your illustration that you feel like you're kind of operating with one hand tied, yeah. tied behind your back. And what might it be like if we were not in oh, that gosh. environment? Yeah. So we know from research that Kentucky gets um, an exceptional return on investment for our dollar in education. Yeah. We're in the top tier of states for the academic outcomes that we get. Um, at a uh, per pupil amount that mm -hmm. is in the bottom tier of all states. So imagine if we exactly. were more adequately and then therefore more equitably funding our districts in a day and age where our students need much different things in the learning environment, like we're sitting in this environment today, yeah. they need much different things than they needed in our generation. Well, the today. terror came in in 89, like David said, it, it met the need then. But we don't teach the same way, and we don't have the same requirements yep. that we had back then. So everything runs its course, mm -hmm. and I think it's ran its course. So we need to come back and look at the funding mechanisms and the and the tax rates, and the, all that has to be reviewed at well, some point. One of the things that when I'm talking with, in particular, my high school staff and high school leadership is high school education for a lot of us looks the same today as it did 100 years ago. Right. Are we adequately meeting the students' needs if that's the case? Mm -hmm. So how do we transition without someone telling us to, to better serve our kids? A uh, meaningful. A so meaningful they're, education. They're, yeah. One of the programs that we initiated this year and has got a lot of press in our region is uh, our senior serve and learn program. Every student in our senior class participates in the serve and learn. They go out, they mentor, they job shadow. Uh, they, have have the, they have the they have the ability to make decisions if they like this industry. We've had some that said, "I want to do this," but then they said, "Oh, that's not for me. I want to do this." Uh, we're expanding on that next year. We're going to we're going to develop things uh, uh, for entrepreneur. We started a school bank this year for our middle school gift and talented. At the end of the year, they're going to get their earnings plus interest back to go out and have some kind of little celebration. But we're we're exposing them to different industries. And that's our job to prepare them for those types of things. Mm -hmm. You talked about his gift and talent. Our gift and talented uh, middle school students went, uh, they won a competition. They went to the state level in robotics this year. Uh, they didn't have the material, but I found the way to find some funding and we actually uh, bought some uh, supplies for them. And so it's been a wonderful experience for them uh, just to be able to see them compete. Now they didn't win, but they got the opportunity to go. And it was amazing to see that gifted those those seventh and eighth grade students building those little robots and competing with them. Those are those are things that David's talking about. We're changing the way we're we're, we're viewing the education, and, and we're hoping. And not only that, but we've got to change the way our teachers teach, and they've got to be retrained because we've got a population, and we're having to do that with a limited professional development as far as funding goes, he can tell you. Well, as far as the funding side of it, you, you look at sequin up $8, but we got cut textbook, we got cut in professional development, we got cut transportation. So in essence, when you start taking those things away from us, that seat really didn't help. Uh, we got to find that money somewhere. Yeah. There's still net negative. Yes, a net negative. And he says, you know, we're talking about changing what we do. A, a faculty member sent me a, a, a great quote the other day, he said, the most dangerous phrase in the English language is, this is the way we've always done it. Mm. Yeah. And and and, and, and gotta break this. That, that's got to be changed. Mm -hmm. And we are doing that. The superintendents in the region, Dr. Hawkins, we're, we're taking those first steps. And our community really is starting to buy into that. And that's, that's a beautiful thing to see. Absolutely. And you got to remember, these teachers haven't had a raise in McGoffin County in five years. And there's no prospect of one coming in the future. But they're still performing every day. They go in and they work and they teach and, and they're willing to adjust and change. And I actually had a meeting yesterday with a couple of teachers talking about Google Classroom. And they were so excited to show me what they were doing in the classroom. It, it's inspiring. But it's sometimes disheartening knowing that you can't do more for them. Well, we're, the other kind of thing that's changing is our students need, yes, they need more and different academic supports, and we need to, we need to focus on the learning environment as a priority. Mm -hmm. They also need additional social supports. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's uh, Ten percent of the students in eastern Kentucky are being raised by grandparents, mm -hmm. and, four and, percent higher than the rest of the state. And we're spending more of our funding on uh, Counseling services, counseling services yeah. or special needs services because these children are coming nothing against them but they're having some issues that we never had to deal with in the past one of the things that I'm, I'm really thankful that the legislative body did this session was Senate Bill 1 the counseling, uh, the counseling side but the problem is there's no Who's money there pay for that? so you know 
we're all looking at that. Yeah, that's the right idea. But are you going to provide adequate funding for us to do those things? Unfunded so, mandates. You know, and, and that's that. We all agree that needs to be done. But you only have so many dollars to to, to divvy out, and so we're. You know, I know their commitment is there in the next session. We're all eagerly waiting to see that, see it take shape, and uh, you know. And it will benefit our students. Yeah, and it it, it has to. So you released the report, uh, Public Education in Rural Eastern Kentucky, A Region's Way Forward, uh, A Region Rising, if you will. Uh, You released it in Frankfurt Mm -hmm. at a press conference. What do you want from the General Assembly uh, in the 2020 session, which is a budget session, or as we move forward to assist with the idea of a rural edu economy? in Eastern Kentucky and the work that you're doing? I think to meet the constitutional requirements of fully funding education. That, that's a start. And, and to, to understand, and, and as far as talking about them, uh, just to understand and have some compassion to what we are facing mm-hmm. as school leaders uh, in this day and time, not only in Eastern Kentucky, but across the state. But the challenges that we face, and, and especially in Eastern Kentucky, that it's not just schools it's the entire region economy edge economy with the local governments and the schools we've all got to have a little help and a little well, bit of and guidance the other thing on getting us to where we want to go is to have open dialogue uh, have trust in the conversations have trust in people that are experts in their fields uh, that policy making can't be a one-sided one-way street it has to be open it has to be transparent and all all stakeholders have to be at the table. Mm-hmm. Um, we the people. We the people. We should remember what we're here about. It's about students. Yeah. That's right. And That's if right. they will remember that and they will do what they need to do, then we'll be fine. And Scott, David, the big takeaway for me is you all are exemplifying uh, the promise of public education and the hope and potential that you see in your young people every day in the work of this report and in the work that's clearly going on in this region on behalf of students. It's, it's, it's inspiring. Thank you very much. Um, it, it's you. energizing. Um, and we hope that getting the story of what's happening in this region, in KVEC, with the leadership of 22 superintendents in their communities, will help inspire the rest of the state to follow your lead. I think what's inspiring is when you see that child. Yeah. And our students can compete against the Go through 12 years of high school education and then come back to our area like we did, like most of the superintendents in our area, like a teacher he was talking about. It's a former student of mine. When you see those kids become adults and successful and productive, mm-hmm. that's that's inspiring. That's right. That's right. And, 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 and that's what we're here for. And, and mm-hmm. we've we've got to bring those people back if we're going to uh, uh, re uh, uh, reinvent this region. Uh, we've got to have our our students back. We can't afford to lose those, and 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 that's what I'm seeing. And we we've, we've already lost one generation. We can't afford to lose mm-hmm. another. Thank you both for all the work that you're doing and for the time you've spent with us today. We look forward to continuing to work with you to help uh, forward the ideas in your report on behalf of Eastern Kentucky and to benefit the entire state. When you're talking about our next goal for us is we're going to start working more with our region with the governments mm-hmm. and think that's the next step we've already kind of started on so we're going to be on that this I'd summer. like to invite you to come to each of our districts uh, sit down with our students because our students our students understand this better than mm-hmm. I our students want to come home I'm going to take you up on that Absolutely. invitation anytime Absolutely. you want to come over so this is our, our first five minute Friday uh, video from Eastern Kentucky uh, and now we'll put ourselves on, on notice that we're going to be back for a number of other videos uh, in the next few months and in the year to come and are looking forward to highlighting all of the good, innovative, inspiring work in this region.